Give Welcome to Markets Now. I'm Michelle Rook with Brad Coimo, Coimo, Coimo Barlick. And we're seeing mostly lower grain trade this morning over in the livestock mixed to higher. And Brad, let's start off talking about the cattle markets. Another stellar week of cash trade last week. And so, you know, futures have been at a discount. Where does cash go from here? And do futures eventually have to retest the old highs? Well, thanks for having me on. Um, once again, um, you know, I'm, you know, as the old fundamentalist uh, in the room here, um, once in a while it pays to have uh, manure on your boots, right? Uh, sure. you know, I, I, I've contended on this show and your show for a while that the cattle aren't there in the north. <clears throat> you know, quoted some of those smart alecky comments that I've, you know, accumulated over the year. You know, how one of them is the beginning and the end of all markets start in Iowa. And I, the cattle, we've got a few cattle here, of course, but. But, you know, this is the time of year when we'd be in the heart of our calf run. And, and we've got show lists that are half or less of what they normally are. And the cattle that are on the show list are very fat. It sounds like 2014, right? Selling everything with a tailhead and a brisket. So uh, futures continue to lag at a discount like they did in 2014, you know, anticipating that someplace here something's going to happen and the market will you know come off of these, these record highs. But uh, in the meanwhile... Uh, we've got leverage. Uh, $2 was paid here first by a regional and then by one of the majors. Uh, I know from firsthand experience that the cattle that were sold to that major because they're mine are going today. They were sold Friday. Um, I, so I, I still think uh, let, let's keep our head on straight here. Let's stay current. Um, um, I'm reminded of a quote, and I apologize if you're offended, but um, one of my greatest friends in this business, Charlie McVeigh, used to say, when you got them by the balls, their hearts and minds will follow. And it feels like that's where we are right now here with having some leverage in, in, in the feedlot. Yeah. In the meantime, though, the Packers have tried to maybe compensate for that, or we've seen a compensation in the market with higher weights. If we get some weather that moves in here, do you think that's finally going to start to take that leverage away? Well, I think you, um, you're right. And, and I think it's well said that you, you point out, you know, cause it's not all, you know, rainbows and balloons here. It's a, one of the things that you're worrying about, or I'm wondering about is, is the weight, you know, it feels like we're so current. How come the weights aren't lower? Right. Uh, part of that reason I can't contend has been that the weather since all the way back into February, even, you know, uh, has been very, very mild, uh, and performance on the cattle, uh, has been awesome. Uh, now we're looking my neck of the woods here we're not gonna have any rain for 10 days which is okay with us believe me um and, it, and it's gonna get hot so that maybe is gonna trim some of this four pound a day stuff that's been going on uh, and slow that down a little bit so i would say the that, that used to be bullish hogs too but i'm not sure anything's bullish hogs anymore but uh you know we'll see once i would think that the heat would slow this, these gains down for sure so if we retest the September 2023 highs in the cattle market, Brad, when do you think that's going to happen? Is it going to be fairly soon? Well, I would say yes. Uh, you know, when you uh, whip the horse, you'd better run, you know, so when you've got $2 cash cattle news and the short bought packer, uh, you know, and, and I'm glad to see we're starting to firm up here as we're visiting this morning. Uh, the, the, uh, uh, it, it, it's probably sooner rather than later. Now, uh, long term, you know, I've been very friendly to the market and I've been saying that really the tight numbers, in my opinion, aren't until late fourth quarter and first quarter of next year. And I haven't changed my mind there. Um, you know, I, I still think it looks to me like the, the cow calf guy should be incentivized to maybe save a heifer or two. Uh, I think it's already started in some areas. Uh, and, and, and as that reality happens, uh, that's even less fit cattle here as we get into the, you know, the, around the around the new year and then to the first quarter of next year. But in the short term, yeah, I would think I'll be disappointed if we don't do it this week um, But because the news is good. So you better whip it. Yeah. So did the funds come piling back in here because they're still not as robust as they were last September in terms of their position on the long side? That's a good question. Um, I would say yes. And believe it or not, you know, I was told by one fun friend of mine that he, he said, you know, really, we're going to have to get above 186 on a closing basis to, to get them interested. Again, I thought, really, that far? You know, but we've done that now. Okay. Right. 
Uh, and, and so I expect that they've got some ammo. Uh, and don't forget, today is day one of the Goldman, too. So if the August doesn't seem quite as spiffy the next day or two, as we, you should think, uh, then that's maybe why. So there'll be some rolling of August into October, probably. But I got to think with this July inventory report reinstated that there'd be some interest in the deep deferreds or the further back months, too, as the market will reflect on what's going to be, you know, very, very low cow number and a very far small calf crop number, I'm sure. So, um, I don't know. They might roll all the way back into some of the back end of the market. It wouldn't surprise me. Okay. So since you brought that up, what, are we going to see that uh, July inventory report released when it normally is, or will it be delayed? Or My understanding is going to be when it was supposed to have been. Uh, okay. So uh, unless I'm wrong, but uh, my understanding is reinstated the way it was. So I would assume that it's going to come out like it was scheduled for. Gotcha. One other follow-up question here before we get to hogs. Um, We've had some, I guess, some compromised uh, packers here because of some of the, you know, flooding and weather issues. Dakota City, though, this morning in Nebraska has got a little bit of a, an issue. So they're going to be down, what, a shift or what? Um, as soon as I know, uh, you know, I what I've heard and that the, that information for me is about 30 minutes old or so. Uh, was that they have a gas leak, which has made them stop killing, and and you know, I think. Hopefully that that's, you know, just going to be a precaution. They'll figure it out and, and get it straightened out. And, you know, I don't know. You know, I say I, hopefully it's no big deal and then it'll turn into something. But that's as much as I know. So I can't really say anything more than that. Hopefully it's 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 uh, not a, a big problem. But And you Dodge, know, City, Dodge City, Kansas, are they back up today? Yeah. Running like they're, they're expecting to have a normal day today. Yeah. Gotcha. All right. Hogs. We keep trying to find a bottom. Um, it's been a tough go. Do you think we can manage to find a bottom or do we have to get the cash to start leading this thing? Well, call the newspaper. August hogs are up a dollar twenty. I mean like, Wow, okay. Yeah. But this is the classic deal is hogs are a dollar higher at nine o'clock and a dollar lower at one o'clock. Um, you you have a chart formation that gives you a little bit of hope. Okay, you got a big outside day reversal up that started the thing. Now you're getting through some of the the tighter moving averages of 10, the 12, the 15. Um, so you're, you're doing some stuff that might finally shake the confidence of these short uh, these short uh, fun guys. But I you know from a fundamental standpoint, we think the numbers get a little tighter here. Um, you know we, we also think the weather should be a little bit friendly. Um, I, I, if they haven't beaten this thing up enough, I, you know, even, even a rally back to some of these moving averages, like get August back to that 93 to 95 level sure seems to be attainable to us. I, I guess I'd like to think that we finally probably put the low behind us, but uh, it's, I've been fooled before. These things are hard to trade. Yeah. Uh, nice close in the greens on Friday. We had higher weekly closes, a bullish key reversal, weekly reversal in soybeans and man, we're getting hammered today. This is all about weather again, isn't it? Right. I went home Friday with a little bit of hope, you know, weekly reversal up. It's kind of the way the grains like to make lows, you know, uh, but uh, this time of year, uh, weather is, is that's it. That's what we're, that's what we're trading. And the perception here that the Eastern Corn Belt, which is marginally uh, dry, is going to get a big round of rain here coming off of this hurricane system as it pushes in length. And uh, so I think that that's the name of the game. That's what we're trading. Um, We'll see what's on crop conditions today. Um, Western Corn Belt, I would expect some further deterioration of the corn crop, uh, but I think right now we're trading the, the, the moisture and the rain. I, I, I'm i curious to see here whether or not the market is gonna, or right on the lows here, December corn's right near the low. Yeah. Uh, I'd, I'd like to, I was hoping that last week's lows were gonna establish kind of a bottom of what starts to be a trading range. You got a lot of momentum this morning though, so we'll see. But uh, maybe we can hold these lows and build up a, a little bit of a low here and and, and then go. I, I still think there's kind of an argument for old crop corn, a uh, bullish argument from the standpoint of basis and exports and what the ethanol grind looks like. But uh, right now it, uh, it it matters less that it matters more that it's raining in Indiana. Yeah, and I totally agree with you about the old crop stocks, but unfortunately, we found more stocks in the quarterly stocks report that we got to get kind of reconciled here in the report on Friday. That's not helping, is it? Not, not at all. And uh, every time we get another report, there seems to be more bad news in it. So it seems like uh, these reports come about every other day lately, too. So, yeah, it's it's hard to restore the confidence. You got a fun community that's largely short. So we, we got our work cut out for us. Absolutely. All right. Thanks for joining us. Brad Quimo with Quimo Quimo Varlick. That's Markets Now.